Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop, Euphoria. Euphoria, Build a Better Dystopia by Jamie Stegmeier and Alan Stone. In the game Euphoria, it plays from two to six players, takes about an hour or so to play, maybe a little more for your first time, and it's for ages 13 and up. In the game Euphoria, you're going to be basically uh, controlling this, uh, the populace. You're gonna have workers of your own moving around from different locations, trying to gather certain uh, types of resources, whether it be, uh, the basic resources of gold, stone, and clay, or whether it be commodities like food, uh, bliss, water, and energy. You'll be utilizing the things that you pick up and then turning them into certain things in order to gather uh, victory points onto a board. As you start to, sorry, place victory points onto a board. As you start to place victory points on the board, if you can finish placing all of yours before anybody else, you're going to win. There's a bunch of stuff in this game. It has a huge table space. I think you'll be pretty interested in taking a look at Euphoria down below. I'll Show you what comes in the game, then I'll tell you how to play, and then we'll come up and I'll tell you what I think about it. Euphoria is a worker placement at its core. In the game, you'll simply be placing down workers onto a board to gather certain commodities, in which case you're then going to turn them into resources, and then you're going to build things and place your victory point stars onto the board. When you finish placing them all, you win. Very, very simple. There's three things you can do on your turn. One is place a worker or workers if you meet the specifications. Two is take worker or workers off of the board board and uh as far as you meet the specifications. And three is you can simply play one of these secret hidden down uh, cards in play. You can only do these once in an entire game. So the main things you'll be doing is taking uh, workers away and placing them on the board. As you can see, this is everything you get in the game. And we'll just go over all the different components of the game before we get into the nitty gritty of close up and showing you everything on the board and kind of what you can play and how you can play these things. The first thing you're going to note is the setup. Every single game is going to be set up the same way, except depending on the number of players, you're going to have colors on the board that represent their morale and their knowledge of their workers. Every single player's little headpiece here is going to begin on this little three track here. Everybody's morale is going to begin at one, and then everybody's going to start with two die of their color, all of their stars here, four of these cards that have this S-W-I-E symbol on them, one of these little trackers here, which represents um, extra tokens that you might get in the game. If these pools run out, you can simply place one of these on here and it'll symbolize the number. So in this case, this little piece of gold here is times three, so it's three gold. Uh, so, you know, in case you don't have enough uh, resources to utilize there. Uh, as well as uh, everybody is going to then be placing down all the different commodities and resources on the board. Every one of these tunnels is going to have a different resource, whether it be gold, or I believe this is like brick, or no, clay, and then over here is stone for the different territories. Uh, then you're going to have the commodities, which is over here is going to be bliss. This over here is going to be energy. Over there is going to be water. And then over here is going to be food, which are all next to these little square shaped locations here, as you can see. In a three player game, you're going to place uh, three of these little uh, block out tokens on these star areas. And in a four player game, you're gonna simply have uh of uh, two of them on here. So basically there's gonna be enough extra empty spaces for every single player on all of the stars on the board. Thusly, you can place more stars down. Uh, you're also gonna take these little building tiles here shuffled from this deck, and then you're going to deal them randomly on the board face down in each of these square locations. There should be six of them representing each of the different areas, the subterranean area, the worker area, and then the utopia area. Up here is this little blimp and it's not gonna have any of that. The only thing it's gonna have is the star here as well as the the bliss tokens that you can go ahead and uh, place over there um, and then the last things you need to know is each of these little uh, mining areas here these tunnels are going to have a worker on the start space so there should be three of them on each of the tunnels and then down here is going to be this uh, allegiance track for all four of the different civilizations and each of them is going to have a little uh, diamond piece that's actually going to be put on these just before the start on their little uh, icon uh, icon space or symbol. So that, that signifies that it can be moved across that track there. Uh, you're going to set the rest of these cards aside. These ones here are artifacts, which you utilize through the game. And these guys over here are basically your, your workers or whatnot, your recruits. 
and then you're going to have your two dice to begin with, and uh, then you're pretty much ready to go in the game. Everybody's going to have exactly as I explained, as shown here. Should be pretty easy to set up. It looks pretty intimidating, but it's not too bad. The first action, like I said previously, is going to be placing down the uh, the workers here, your little die, on the board here. And when you before you do that, you're going to simply roll these die here, and that's going to start start off the game. Everybody's going to, once they roll them, they're going to keep them there. That's going to symbolize the knowledge of their workers. Every time you roll a die, and there's different times when you should roll a die, is when you pull a worker off, when your worker gets bumped off, or when you build one of these buildings here, you're going to need to roll that die and put it back as any normal worker placement work. You're going to bring your workers back. You roll them, and then you test knowledge. Knowledge is pretty simple. Whenever your um, die, die needs to be rolled, you're going to add up all the pips on your die, including the uh, plus number uh, where your knowledge is. So for instance, the green player here has a plus, actually the black player here has a plus three, and then he's got a five and a four. That's going to be 10, nine, 10, 11, 12. And if it's less than or equal to 16, he would lose a worker, which is one of these die here. And if not, you get to keep them. So the more workers you pull, the more chances that you might have to lose a worker it has a, that interesting aspect to it. Um, but after that, you're going to then get these four cards here. These are your recruits. You're going to select two of them, removing the other two, place one face up as an active recruit and one face down as an inactive recruit. And that's pretty much it as far as setup goes, what every player is going to get and what every player needs to do before the game starts. Okay. Let's go down and I will show you all the spaces. If this gets too complex for you, you can move along to the review and you can check out Rodney's video uh, from Watch It Played. He does an excellent job explaining this game and it was a way I learned the game as well, but hopefully I can do a good, a good enough job to give you an understanding of how the game plays nonetheless and then you can see what I think about it. Okay, so now we have a closer look at the game Euphoria and everything included. I went ahead and set it up so that every single player has their two die, their 10 stars. their are a track here for co uh, commodities and resources so they can utilize them if the pool runs out, as well as this little hidden card here, which is going to have a unique little thing on the back of it. Uh, like I said, this is one of the actions you can take on your turn, but you can only do it once a game, and it's simple. Uh, if you have an artifact card with this symbol on it or two artifact cards, you can flip this over, discarding that or these, and then you get to choose one of two options. You can draw two recruits, which are these guys over here and keep one of them, or you can simply place one of your stars on here, which is gonna count for one of your victory conditions of the game. You can do this earlier on, and if you do, I'd probably choose this one, or you can do this later on, and if so, I'd choose this one. But that's one simple action before we get into explaining how die rolls work. Now, I went ahead and had everybody else roll their die, as well as choosing their recruits, setting one of them face down and one of them face up. The ones that are face up are active recruits, and they these are things that you're basically going to be able to do throughout the game. Uh, this one says whenever you place a worker on the farm, if you have no of uh, no resources, also gain one of these waters. Anyway, that doesn't need to that doesn't need to worry you right now. The first thing is you need to know is on your turn you're simply going to choose a player. The oldest player I believe is going to go first, and it's going to go clockwise from there. And you're going to be able to place these die here. After you've all rolled them, of course they're locked until you've placed them. And uh, let's talk about uh, where you can place them right after one with a quick thing. First of all, as you notice, he rolled a five and a four and he rolled a two and a two. Normally you can only place one die at a time and then it goes to the next player. But if you have any die that match a number of any other die that are in your pool, you can take all of those die, one, two, three, or four of them and place them down uh, from one turn to the next. So that's kind of like a little bonus provided you roll the same exact numbers. Now it's, it's, it does happen, but it is a little bit rare. So let's go ahead and start off with showing you the board here. Uh, there are a lot of different actions here, but there are actually different portions of the board. For instance, this is one portion, right? Uh, this right here is another portion of these four spaces here. And then you have these three tunnels here. And then you have extra actions here along with um, these little spaces here. So let's go ahead and talk about uh, the most simple ones, which are the generator, the farm, the aquifer, and uh, the cot mine. These spaces, when you place a die on them, it is going to give you the resource of the choice or the commodity of the, of the choice that you're placing in. This one is going to give you water. This will give you energy. This will give you food. This will give you clout. When you place a die on here, you're going to look at the number of the die or die in the pool, add them up, and then gain the resources. All resources you gain are going to be in white, and all resources you pay are going to be in gray or dark gray. When you place in this space here, multiple die can go here. If uh, there is just a single square, only one die can go there. 
Uh, then uh, after you've placed, you're going to gain. This is going to give you one of those resources. So he'd take this resource here and place it on his board or place it to the side, however he wants to utilize it. And then he would use this symbol here by moving up this track with this specific um, alliance. For instance, uh, this here is going to move up one when placed here. If this were placed over here, he would instead of taking a clout, he would take an energy and he would move this over uh here, just like that. And these things will give you certain things, which we'll talk about uh, as the game progresses. Now, that would be his only action on his turn, and then he's going to pass, and the next player will get a chance. Like I was saying before, you can actually go up on spaces, so if I play this 5 here as the green player, you can have a 5 plus a 4, which is a 9, making it go to 9+, plus, thusly getting 2 energy here, and putting it over there. And then there's this little... Uh, this little knowledge thing here for your workers. As I explained before, the smarter your workers are, the more likely you are to lose them. So it is dangerous to do that. So the green player would actually move up on this board here from three to four. And then remember, whenever you roll a die, because you're taking guys back or gaining guys or uh, building certain sites, you're gonna check to see if your knowledge is too high. And if it is too high, you'll actually lose a worker of the highest value. And the highest value is the highest pip value. So there is a bonus to getting higher, but it's also at a cost, which is potentially losing workers. Uh, and then the next player can go ahead and go. Now, if he actually chose to place here, he would just gain the same bonus as everybody else, or as the last player, I should say. It'd be a 9, 10, 11, and this is 9+. plus. Or you can go to any of the other spaces. So that's basically how these work. You're either going to be pushing yourself up the track, losing knowledge and gaining one, or gaining two and gaining a knowledge. So it kind of depends on what you want to do and what you're like intending on getting. Uh, another action you could take are these tunnel spaces here. These tunnel spaces are only going to be able to be utilized when you have either food, energy, or water. As you can see, these are the costs of these tunnel spaces, as well as a die. So you're not really going to be able to gain these spaces until after you have gained the resources from these, these specific aquifers, generators, farms, and caught mines. So generally, these are going to be your first action spaces in the game, which will then let you do these. When you do these, you're going to spend your resource. So if this green player already had an orange, or better yet, he could place over here. He'd gain an orange. He'd then go ahead and move up this track by one. He could then take his next action because it's the same number, and he could place over here, thusly spending his orange to the pool. And then he gets to choose to either get one of these pieces here, uh, these pieces of the clay, or he can gain a card. And these cards are the artifact cards. Uh, that would be his options at the moment, which actually will change along with this track here, which we'll explain later. But I guess he'll just go with this piece here. Uh, then, of course, after that, it'd be the next player's turn, and that player here is going to probably go for one of these generator mines as well. We'll just go ahead and say he wants this one. He's going to go ahead and take himself a clout, and he's also going to go ahead and move up that green track, just, just one. Um... And also, this one would be up as well, because this one was placed a four here. Anyway, so now the next player is going to get to go. He's got his five here, and he is going to... He's got an energy, so he can go ahead and put this here. Now, another thing to note about these tunnel systems here is not only do you gain... You, you spend and gain, but you will also move these guys up this track here. So... This guy is already up one because this guy placed here. This guy would also spend his electricity. He would also get his gold bar, provided he wanted it. And he would also move this guy up. So these guys go up this mine track. Now let's talk about the mine tracks now that you got an idea of them. When these guys get to this space here, which is the sixth space, uh, every single one of these recruit cards that are face down will be flipped up and activated. So if this deck ever got here, everybody would check their face down card. And if that face down card matched one of these symbols here, the symbol of this specific type, he would they would actually get to flip it over. Let's see if we actually have one of them. We I don't think we do actually of this specific type. But if they did, they'd flip that up and that card would be active and you get to use that passive ability for the rest of the game. So that's pretty useful. Uh, the other way th this would happen, flipping these guys up, is uh, right here. You could also flip them up as these tracks move along. Um, then, if this goes to the ninth track over here, this is going to get removed, and anybody who has an active recruit of that type or that color then will have access to this space, and they'll be able to take their, uh, their die and place it here and thusly gain the uh, three water, right? So that is a really great space, provided that they have the recruit to utilize that space. Uh, all right, so that's that's the basic for how the mines work. And they basically are just tunneling in to the different locations to steal resources from other players. Pretty interesting, pretty unique aspect to the game. Uh, then you're going to have these spaces here, 
and you're gonna have these spaces here. Let's talk about these ones next, all, all of these. If you have a resource, so like this one here, you could go ahead and place this on one of these spaces that has a corresponding resource, and that would uh, put a die on. So let's go ahead and say that green actually had a one of these pieces right here, right? And he wanted to place over here. He could do that. This would then be discarded. And this is going to sit there. These don't get bumped off unless they are specifically removed by the player. And in order to build these, these pieces here, you're going to need to go ahead and look at this construction site here. And in a four player game, it says any three spaces need to be filled before this gets flipped. So whenever two more pieces or two more workers get placed here, this is going to flip over and this is going to move to the side. And now you'll have an extra action space that you can take along with anybody who placed on these spaces. We're going to put a star on here. Uh, that is basically going to give them another bonus point to win the game, in addition to not having to suffer a negative effect. This is the negative effect for anybody who doesn't have a star. Every time you roll a die, if it's a two, you're going to lose a resource or a commodity. So that's really nasty if you don't have a star here. The only other way to place a star here after building it is if you discard three cards, place a die here, and then you can place your star either on here, which you can only have one of your type, or you can place it over here. Placing your die over here is going to make you spend these this resource here as well as this card here And you're gonna be able to move this track up along with on this side as well And you can put a star over here So this one will let you do it over here and this one will let you do it here if you don't have one here or over here if you do uh, There's only so many spaces you can place them on and you can have more than one of your star in these star areas uh, The only rule for stars being placed on these is you can only have one So that's kind of how these all work. They all have different costs as you can see uh, and they all do different negative effects for people who don't have stars on these locations. Each of these spaces represent both of these building locations. So that is kind of how those work. Uh, pretty pretty simple, I hope. Uh, the, the Another space is over here. This is the worker activation tank. This is where you gather more workers. And as you can see, you can get up to four workers. So this black player over here can get up to four workers. So if he placed one of his die over there, it'd cost him three water or three electricity. It would give him two hearts or it would give him minus two knowledge. And then it would give him an extra worker, which he would roll and place over here. Uh, that's good because you're going to be able to place more actions before taking away. But unfortunately, at this point, everybody has pretty much, uh, technically, we'll just say pretty much everybody has used their die. So let's we'll go ahead and place them on the board here. And we'll start back with the black player again. Now he, as you can see, he can no longer place because all of his, his, his pieces are down on the board. He can't activate this because he doesn't have any cards. So he's going to do his other action, which is to take back. He can take one back or both back. And if he chooses to do so, he's going to take them. He's going to look at this key over here and it says you can either spend a food or a bliss and you then can take all your workers back and gain two hearts or you can spend a heart and take your workers back. If you only have one heart, you're never going to lose more, just like you would never lose more than one after one for in, uh, intelligence. And the same goes for the highest spots on the board. So in this case, he's just going to take these back, he'll roll them, and then he'll place them back in his, his player board area, in which he can go ahead and utilize them next turn. That's his entire action. And everybody is going to do the same thing, rolling these back and bringing them back, and paying either their hearts or their uh, commodities over here. So thusly, it's going to basically give everybody back their dice which is a pretty cool aspect and that's why you kind of want to get more additional die in the game if you possibly can all right so now you have an idea of pretty much most of the spaces the last thing to talk about is over here there are a bunch of additional spaces and that's probably because there's no none of these construction sites this one is any three resources will generate you a movement up on this alliance track for green and a star and both of these spaces go over here this one is three cards of any type uh, and you'll get a star and you'll move the base. This one uh, does a clout, any other non-commodity, uh, any commodity that's not a, a, a clout, and then you'll also draw cards. This is a good way to draw cards. In addition to these other spaces here, which are the the, uh, the tunnels here. And then the final one is to get together, uh, together these specific resources here. You're going to need to spend the uh, the com commodities and you'll also be able to gain these. So there's just a bunch of extra actions you can take up here if you would like. Uh, that's pretty much for the most part all the different spaces you can go onto the board like I talked about previously you have the tunnels you've got these spaces which then turn into these spaces you've got these ones which can let you put stars on here or um, over here as well as the same would go for these and uh, then you've got these bonus spaces up here now 
Over here is maximum hand size. Hand size is relative to your artifact cards that you're going to draw. When you draw a card, so let's say you did this action here, you'd move this tracker up one and gain two cards. There are certain requirements for cards. It's whenever you say symbol that has three, if you had two cards of the same type, so for instance, you had two glasses, you could pay the cost for this. So it's either going to be all three different types or two of the same. And that works for any of the spaces that have three card requirements. A pretty cool little aspect that you can add. And in addition, of course, it tells you over here, it's two of any, which also equals three. The last thing to talk about, other than, of course, hand size, if you have... You know, if this is all, if you all have uh, six, you could have a total of six cards in your hand of these. If you only had two and you had, let's say you already had uh, two and you drew one, you'd have to choose one and discard one. So it's good to have morale high and your workers dumb. Uh, over here is going to be your alliance track, which I talked about how you're going to be moving around the board based on these actions you take. When you get your spaces to here, any of these guys here, um, you're going to take these tokens here and place them next to these spaces, these big square spaces. They're all going to go into these same type of areas, except for, um, no, all of them actually will go in the, the four square spaces. That will allow players, the next time they place on these spaces here, and they have an active one of these guys here, recruits of that color, they'll get a bonus resource of that type. So this is only going to work for people who have bonus resources of that uh, bonus recruits of that type. So in this case, black would actually get an extra clout and uh, maybe blue over here would get to take an extra food. So that's kind of how those work. When they're all up here, you're then going to take these guys here and you're going to place them on these spaces. Let's go ahead and find them. This one here, this one's going to go here and this one will go here. So now instead of or, like a clay or a card, it's a clay and a card. So you'll get both of them when you pay for this, pay this one food. So that's a pretty useful thing. It still will move along this track here. And uh, finally, uh, over here, as far as bonuses kind of go, you're going to be able to flip. So for instance, you have these face down guys here. And whenever uh, you get these faces over to here, it will flip over your face down color. So for instance, this guy has a green one that is face down. If this track gets to here, he can then flip this over. And now this is active and he'll be also able to utilize this space over here, giving him additional uh, bliss. So that's pretty useful. And the final thing is these getting to here. Whenever these little spaces get up to here, you can take your stars and place them on your recruits of that color. So for instance, everybody's going to have the different types of recruits that could have the same, could have different. Uh, they would actually get to place their stars on the recruits provided this, that these are here. So for instance, let's just say that it was like this, which means that all cards are revealed, but only the electricity guys, these guys over here, and the uh, <laughs> blimp guys over here are gonna get free bonus stars. So in this case, only the green guys and the red guys are going to get stars. So something like this. So the person who benefits the most is going to be this player over here because he gets to put two of his stars down. And that is pretty much the game for as much as I can think about. Remember, whenever you're taking die, you're going to be rolling these die. You're going to be adding them up to your intelligence tracker over here and seeing if you have to lose a worker of the highest type and uh, gaining workers over here. But for the most part, that is how you play the game. Once somebody is able to place down all of their stars, uh, any of the spaces that they possibly can place them, they are going to win the game. And that is how you play the game, <laughs> Euphoria. A lot. Like I said, if this is confusing for you, Rodney does a better job, but hopefully this gives you an idea at least of how to play the game. So that was a mouthful, right? There's a lot of rules there. And like I said, there's better people who explain the game than me. Uh, but hopefully that gives you an idea of how to play the game or basically what it's going to be like. Technically, I think I explained everything to where you could play the game, but I don't know how the order works, uh, how, how, how that would work for you guys. I guess I'll have to watch it later and see. Nevertheless, the game's pretty simple, right? It, there's just a lot of spaces on the board. Uh, luckily, those spaces are all kind of reminiscent to each of the different locations on the board. So every single one of these spaces, there's four different locations, right? They're all going to have two different types of placement, other than, of course, the blimps. They have their own unique spaces. You're trying to gather specifically commodities, which are basically free to start with, and then you will then spend them to gather resources. And then those resources will build buildings and get, let you put stars on them. And then after that, you can uh, there's additional spaces that you can utilize that will let you place stars on the star spaces next to the buildings. 
You can also place your stars on your dudes, like I explained, and there is an additional little action you can take that lets you choose kind of a choice. Uh, help a friend escape the dystopian future, or turn in a friend. And either of those choices are either... They're, they're beneficial in one way or another. This one over here, the good choice, is better early game, and, and this one over here is better late game, really. Um, but that's the idea, placing down stars upon thars, much like Sneetches on the beaches. It's a fun game. I really enjoyed this game, and uh, as I explained it to people, in person at least, they gathered it pretty quickly. Maybe it took about 10 minutes or so to gather just the basic aspects of the game and how to place and where you're going to start placing. And really, the board kind of opens up progressively as you gain new resources and as that allegiance track opens up. Flipping over these characters here is going to give you a ton of new special abilities, so you feel different as you're playing the game every time. And of course, in the game it comes with multiple buildings, so you're only going to ever use six of these guys, but there's probably, I think, about 15 or so of them, which adds enough variety in the game to play over and over again. The dice are cool too. They're basically six-sided die. They're custom-made to look like little... Uh, cogs because you're having workers and rolling them is cool for checking those intelligence checks if your guys are ever too intelligent you're actually going to have to lose them because you have to make sure your workers are dumb but you also want them to be high in morale because that way you could have more resources in your hand right so the theme works pretty well and of course you, the the people in the blimp don't need to dig so they're not gonna actually have that dig site so he gave them additional actions and whatnot the rule book is amazing in this game it explains the game very very well in fact i watched the video a video for tutorial before playing the game and then after i watched the video i decided to look at the rules just to make sure that i remembered everything pretty well and the rule book explained everything very very simply it's very nice uh jamie's games are often really well done as far as the rules go not only that but the production value of this game is amazing it has the game trays which is an nice little added touch all of the little tokens and whatnot are excellent as well the board is beautiful and very illustrious it feels like you're in this dystopian future so i really really enjoyed that aspect i've had people comment uh, to me previously who said that the theme didn't hit it for them or there are certain actions they didn't like specifically uh, one person mentioned they didn't like the fact that if you don't have a star on the buildings because you didn't build them you're going to suffer some kind of consequence and that bugged them but for me it was fine because you can still put stars on that building it's just going to have a little higher it's going to have a definite higher cost so you have to kind of weigh all of your choices in this game. Uh, these cards are amazing too. I really, really enjoyed playing with them. They gave a lot of new, different aspects uh, to your turn, specifically bumping players off of the board and uh, being able to place certain cards down and whatnot. It, it was it was just very interesting, basically. And not only that, like I didn't mention really before, but there are certain spaces you can bump players off, and there's also spaces on the board where you can't place there unless you have a alliance, uh, a, a character that is basically uh, active. So in the green area for the, or not the green area, sorry, maybe the, the, the electric area, I guess, in that tunnel area where I ta told you about gathering those three water droplets, you can't place there unless you have a guy that's face up that represents that specific type. I, I might have mentioned it, who knows, I'm blathering on and on, right? But really enjoyable game. It does take about an hour, but the first game you play is going to take two or three, realistically, because if, especially if you don't have somebody who's ever played Euro before. I When I played this the first time, we had somebody who had just got into playing board games, and uh, they progressed higher and higher, and this is like their highest, most complex game they've played. And this one definitely was fun for them, but there was a lot of learning going involved involved in these kind of games. If you're a staunch worker placement player who's done multiple this multiple times, this game is not going to be very challenging for you to learn how to play, but there's going to be a lot of variety. I, I highly suggest this game. I really, really enjoyed it. I like all the components and all the pieces. I think they did a great job with all of it overall. I mean, like I said, other than just is a little bit of a learning curve and there's some mean aspects to it where you can't place on, if you place on the buildings over here, a certain players are, that don't place here are gonna have to suffer consequences. And if they are not really understanding how everything kind of works, it's going to slow them down to the point where everybody else is speeding along and they just kind of pull out into the back because they aren't building the buildings, which is very, very important. Uh, but other than that, excellent game. This game I would strongly recommend to anybody who's into Euros, anybody who's into the worker placement style games. And then also it's a decent midway size. It's just after a gateway as far as Euros go. Fun. Brilliant. Another well done game. I really enjoyed this one and I can't wait to try the next one, Jamie. Excellent job. Eu Euphoria. <laughs> Build a better dystopia. 
This is a fun game. All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. If you like this video, go and check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment, as well as hitting that, that little bell notification thingy. It will let you know when we do more video reviews, and uh, it, it does help me. I do appreciate it, as well as taking a look at Euphoria, Build a Better Dystopia by uh, it's Mensa Select Winner. That's pretty good, right? Stonemaier Games. Uh, they do a lot of great games there, and the production value is excellent. It's excellent. M most people in the industry know this. <laughs> as well as taking a look at our site, unfilteredgamer.com. Tons of blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. And our friends, everythingboardgames.com, the giveaway geek, Ferdinand the Cardboard Stacker, and of course, show me how to win. The next season's coming out pretty soon. I'm really excited to see the uh, three meeple female ladies show us how to win games. It's a really cool, interesting channel. All right, guys, that's all I got for this time. And as always, I look forward to building a better dystopian future with you next time.